Good afternoon to all. Am I audible? Good afternoon, sir. Yes, you are audible, sir. Let us wait for two minutes more. Okay. Sir. Any doubts? If you have, you can speak out right now. Okay, in the previous class, <clears throat> we were studying the types of converters that were uh, the basis of this polyelectronic drives. So that was the part of lecture four. So we studied AC to DC converters, then we went to AC to AC voltage controllers. The frequency was not controlled here. Then we went to DC to DC converter, and then finally DC to AC converter. We also saw that there are many ways in which you can convert AC directly to another form of AC without going through an intermediate DC stage. Now we are in lecture 5 where I am now starting the DC motors. That's uh, one minute more we will wait for others to join. Uh, I think you people will be attending offline classes from 15th, uh, right? Yeah, Bijit. Will you be attending uh, the offline yes, classes sir. from 15th, right? Sixth semester will attend uh, yes, the sir. offline classes, right? Yes, okay. sir, but yes, uh, sir. only yes, lab, sir. Only lab, okay. but only for lab, sir. It is not for theory, I think. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's continue with lecture five now. It's already 205. Okay, so lecture five starts with the types of DC motors that are available for having your electric drives. Right. So <clears throat> DC motors can be classified as separately excited DC motor, then shunt DC motor, series DC motor. This is the compound which is basically a combination of shunt and a series winding, which can be either differentially uh, differentially added or can be additively added. And then we have permanent magnet DC motor. Then we have servo motors. Uh, so let me discuss each one of them. So in DC separately excited motor, what do you have? Excited motor, what do you have is a DC motor. And you will have, sorry for these lines. Okay, let me go to paint window, that will be better. These lines come up. Okay. So we have this. These are the brushes which I just drew. This is the R, this is the back end of E back. And what we have in a separately excited motor, we have a separately excited DC field winding. Right, this winding can be controlled. So this is VDC. If you apply the voltage, here, current will start to flow. And as per the winding, this is the uh, the exciting voltage for the winding V field, and this is the RSH shunt resistance this is a series resistance these are the brushes these are the brushes so it will start to rotate right so this is for the dc separately excited motor now what is the problem with this and advantage with this what is the advantage with this 
constant flux yeah the flux is constant all over the supply all over the variations of the load the flux is constant right the torque is proportional to phi into ia I, what is phi phi is the flux the flux field, field flux right phi f and ia is what ia is the armature, armature current, current. Armature. So it is very linearly dependent, and the control using these motors is very very fine, right? It is completely linear. But what is the disadvantage? Say so this is also 220 volt DC, and again this is around 200 volt DC, right? So what is the disadvantage? You need two separate power supplies, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the disadvantage. You have to arrange for two separate power supplies. So what can we do? We can put this winding in parallel, right? Is it not so? Can this not happen? If you put this winding in parallel to the supply voltage, then we have an advantage that the field flux will more or less remain constant, more or less, right? And uh, it will exhibit the same characteristics as that of a DC separately excited motor. The characteristics will differ a very by a very small factor, but almost it will be the same, right? So this is advantage is that only one power supply has to be there. That's the biggest ad advantage. Now, say in particular applications where a very high amount of torque is required, a very high amount of torque, say like a crane. Uh, say there is a big load uh, a big cow has fallen into the well and it needs to be picked up right so what you call the you call the crane service and then you want the cow to be lifted up right so what you will do so can you lift up by a small amount of torque no right you need to have no, a very gosh. high amount of torque right so for this we add a series winding to the Thing. Now, if there is a series winding, then the armature current will actually produce the field flux. So the torque will be phi f into I a. Now, the field flux is being produced by the I a, right? So what will happen? Torque will become proportional to I a square. Right. So this is a completely non-linear motor. And it has very high torque. Very high torque. So this is used in applications like the crane. It will just be on for a certain amount of time, say some seconds, and then it will be switched off. Right. And a series motor should not be started without any load. Say so there, so there is no load. If you start it, then the, the speed of this uh, this armature will be so much high within some seconds that the parts may fly out. Tell me one such application of this series motor in your day-to-day -day applications. A crane you may not see, but day-to-day -day applications you might be seeing one thing. I want to hear that. Traction, traction, sir. Interaction, railway. Uh, it's a traction. We don't see the railways every day, right? Oh. More common than that. It's okay. It's one of the examples for starting of the traction, but every day what we see. An application of a series motor. It first started for the girls. That's a hint. Can anyone comment on this? Okay, so let me point it out to you. Earlier, there used to be only scooters and some type of scooty for girls, right? And the girls were unable to kick. And the uh, that uh, that starting mechanism, right? So what people did, the people attached a small C series motor to the uh, thing, and they just had the switch, and with one switch it started. So seeing for that, every scooter, every bike started implementing that, and now it's called the self starter. Mm -hmm. Don't you have this? So yes. And now this technology is so much established. The new bikes are not given any kicking mechanism, mechanical kicking, uh, mechanical kicking support. Yes. Yes. Sir, Someone wait, was... me aap dis beech ah. me aap disconnect ho gaye the. Huh? I was disconnected. I don't know, sir. I don't think so. Abhijit, was it so? 
No, sir. Okay, so please check your condition. Okay. So I was telling that uh, uh, series motor is actually used in applications like cranes, starting of a, a railway engine, and most commonly it is used in self starters. Self starters, you know. Yes, sir. In bikes and yeah. in, in bikes, bikes and, and all bikes, almost every bike, ninety-nine percent of. The but bikes. sir, sir, yes. but, but the motor should be very small. Yes, it is small. You just just check it out. You just check. You just take your own bike. There is a thing. Yes. Uh, sir, actually, I was suffering from power cut. Sir, I joined late. Sir, self starter. Can you explain it again? If every time it happens, the whole class suffers. Huh? So it is C series DC motor. Nothing significant was being discussed. So please check out the recording also. Right. So nothing significant was being told. Okay. So in the series motor, it, the torque is proportional to I A square. Right. So if it is I A square, the torque is very high. So it is used in some applications like crane, like self starters, right? Like in starting of an uh, of a electric traction, right? So so and the separately excited motors might be used for precise control. It was earlier used. Nowadays it's not used. Shunt motor as a usual running operation. Of the of the vehicle because its torque will be lower. How much torque will be proportional to phi f into i a? Oh, yeah. It is a linear, completely linear. This one and this uh, one is linear. This is linear and this is linear. Right. For the C series, it's a non-linear motor. It's a non-linear. Means it will be something like this. It will rise. The torque will rise up with rise of current so this is the current the torque will be something like this and finally we have this pm dc motor which we will discuss later because this is very common we find it in almost all the applications then servo motor is there which we'll discuss later and compound motor is a combination of a shunt motor and actually a series motor Okay, so let me draw the uh, thing also. Okay. okay, so what is it? These lines come up. Let me go to the paint. So for this, what we have is we actually have a shunt winding and we also have a series winding, right? So what do we do? Uh, actually, you have to place it somewhere. Erase this and make this a series winding. Second, the series winding will have lower number of turns, right? Because it is a fat wire, why? Right? Why it's why it's much more thicker? Can you tell me? And the shunt winding carries lots of windings, lots of turns. This is the power supply. So, what is the thing like? This is the series winding. So why it has, and this is shunt. It has lower number of turns. Why? Because the wire is very fat. Why fat? Why thick? Because it will carry the armature current, right? Mm. But so its, it's, it's resistance will be in the range of ohms. Very, very less, five to 10 ohms, right? Very, very less. And this resistance will be in the range of 200 ohms. This will be the 5 to 10 or something or lower than that also. So this will not carry the armature current. This will carry a very minute current, say 1 ampere only. And this might go for around 50, 60 amperes. Right. It will carry a huge current. So the number of turns is lower here. And here it is larger. So this is a compound motor. 
a compound motor. So if by the switching action you can have both the characteristics somewhat. So let's not go deeper into it. It is a separate thing. Okay, so that was the DC motor side. So in the PMDC motor, you have already seen that it's uh, the flux action is actually done by the use of. Uh, so the flux action is actually done by the use of permanent magnets. So here, what you miss is the magnetizing winding. Right. So these are the permanent magnets, and here you have the uh, the core winding. So that's the armature, armature winding is there, right? So this is the thing for the DC motors. As for the AC motors are concerned, you will find it as broadly classified. Sir, in, uh, yes. Sir, what about the separately excited DC and servo, servo motor and shunt motor? It's separately excited DC motor you have obviously learned in the, in the machines class, right? Yes, sir. So we were not discussing. Separately excited, I actually discussed you were offline till then. So just check out okay. the recordings. Nothing okay, okay. And servo nothing significant. Servo motor, I will not discuss it right now here. I will okay. take it and in shunt, some later shunt, time. Shunt, we discussed you were still on, offline. Right. So shunt no, is what? We discussed just now about compound motors, right? Yes, yes. So it and was in parallel, right? It's in parallel. It's in parallel. That's called the shunt motor, shunt okay. DC motor. And okay, okay. series means it will be in, in series, right? I hope you've got that thing. Series means it will be in series, the winding. And since the series winding will actually carry the armature current, so it is, so you cannot make it so many windings. The wire will be thick. Someone was asking some question. Please speak up. Yes, sir. So yes. Because of network issue, I didn't get the answer, sir. What oh, that's uh, what is the common series motor? It's not a common series motor, it's a compound. Oh, hey, last time you asked, na, what is the common answer related to girls? We're talking about a scooty. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yes, sir. So much network disturbances. Okay, once you come to the college, the network will be still Okay, so in the Okay, so what was common for the series DC motor was that it is used in cranes, right? It is used in electric tractions to start the railways. And um, then finally, it is used in self starter bikes, which is very common to see, right? Nowadays, everyone has a switch. If you just turn it on, it will start, right? Okay, sir. So that's the common example of a series DC motor application. Speaking of this, that only. Okay. So, so as shunt for, DC motor takes time, sir, right? Shunt DC motors wouldn't be able to give so much of torque, right? It cannot give so much of torque, but so it is used in the running. So actually, what during starting? So during starting, just a second. Okay, during start. Huge torque is required, right? Yes, Just sir. to start. So for starting, yes, the compound motor is actually uh, switched as a series motor, right? And while running, the torque requirement is lower, right? Yes, sir. So it is done as a shunt DC motor. So that's so compound the, motor acts as series and shunt motor. Yes, both, right? because both the windings are there. Hmm. Both the windings are there. So if for running a vehicle, say it requires lesser torque, so you use the shunt motor. But to start the vehicle from rest to motion, it will require a huge torque. Right. So use the series motor. Okay, sir. Got it. Yeah. That's a hybrid model type. And as far as AC motors are concerned, we have two types of motors, broadly speaking. We have synchronous asynchronous motor synchronous. and synchronous motor, right? Yes. Now, what do you have to tell about this synchronous and asynchronous? First of all, this synchronous comes from the word synchronism, right? So 
let me go to a blank so this comes from what synchronism so this synchronism means what there is a synchronous speed so the synchronous speed is that 18120 f by p for induction machines right so what is the yes. speed what uh, what is related to this speed it the rotating magnetic field field is field right created mm -hmm. due to what due to flux three windings are there three windings are there now these three windings are placed at 120 degrees apart and r y v these three windings are actually given the three phase power supply and this is placed at 120 degree apart right due to this what is happening what is happening a rotating magnetic field magnetic is created field is the road the speed of this rotating magnetic field is actually ns right and if the rotor can move with a speed equal to that of ns then it is called synchronous motor right if the if the rotor of the motor cannot move with the speed of the synchronous speed it is called asynchronous motor done is it okay yes sir yes sir so that is the major difference between the two right so asynchronous motor you have like squirrel cage induction motor and slip ring induction motor so both of them are uh, three phase uh, okay so, so squirrel cage induction motor it can also be single phase also so it will be either as per the power supply it can be single phase or three phase right so give me an example of a squirrel cage induction motor the very common example all over the world i uh, hopefully india so uh, just tell me one example squirrel cage induction motor single phase most common example someone is outside please can you please mute it yeah so tell me sir water pump huh? so water pump water pump it's okay but so domestic not water very common not very common just wait i am having some trouble now i sir, think it's yes yes ceiling fans it's what it's a single phase induction motor yeah. right yes sir yes Yes, single phase. So it is yes. called a squirrel cage induction motor. It's a single phase induction motor actually, <laughs> right? And you have ceiling fans. It's running on single and mixer, phase. And mixer grinder, sir. Mixer grinder. Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. Mixer grinder might be something else. It's probably DC motor. Uh, I have sir, to see. It's an example of single induction motor. My mother taught us. Yeah, nowadays actually it changes from time to time. earlier there was it was a dc motor right or a universal motor a, a universal motor runs can run on both ac and dc supplies and the design will actually vary from company to company from time to time right nowadays dc motors are hardly used they use bl dc motors in the electric vehicles so what will you call after some time the srm motors will replace them so what will you tell it is not the truth it is a momentary truth right? it will depend from company to company also so ceiling fans are there then water pumps so that's a common example of a squirrel cage induction motor and then you have slip ring induction motor uh, the example of which is not very common you won't be seeing a slip ring induction motor around your house right and then uh, you obviously have to come to the lab to see it and then synchronous motors for synchronous motors we have several types one of this is called a cylindrical pole motor which as a generator is called an alternator i hope you know it 
yes alternator yes so alternator yes. is used in what in association with the thermal power plants to produce electricity mm -hmm. right yes in power plants yes, yes. and uh, these are very high speed ones so because of the high speed the diameter has to be lower right if it is a high speed and the diameter is very high so it is very very large diameter then what will happen it will try to break out right so the diameter of cylindrical pole motors are smaller than that of salient pole motor so where can you find salient pole motors its speed is very less around say 350 rpm and here you can go for around 3000 rpm or 1500 rpm also the cylindricals can go for high speeds why you know if you find that a motor is having lower amount of diameter and if an another motor having a higher amount of diameter then it obviously means that the fat motor will be running at a lower speed because for a larger diameter you cannot turn it at high speeds it will parts will fly off due to centrifugal forces right because of inertia because of centrifugal forces not because of any inertia because of centrifugal forces i hope you know it it's a part of class 12 physics right and salient pole motors are they are they are having more diameter and so their speed is less and if you were trying to use it as a generator they are specifically used in hydel power plants right why because with the use of hydel power plants you cannot rotate a machine at very high rpm just think about it can you rotate a cylindrical pole motor cylindrical pole motor, pole motor used as a uh, so let me go to a blank page used as a generator at 3000 rpm just using the water is it possible is it possible no right so you have to arrange for a gear mechanism this and that and that will and that will produce losses and wear and tear so salient pole motors are actually used for this they are having low rpm and why i am considering it as a part of drives can you tell me why because they are obviously used in pump storage power plants what do you mean sir by... can you repeat this this line again see if it's a waterfall right and here you have a turbine right you have a have a have a turbine here right and you have a salient pole motor attached to this salient pole machine i am using the word machine in order to say that it can be used both as a generator and as a motor also right so it is of low rpm say around 350 rpm only right so what the engineers do power system engineers do during uh, during the day the water is actually the stored water in the dam is actually let to flow through it and it will produce rotation and it will produce electricity right right but during the night what happens yes. the load falls if the load is low the grid may become unstable because the frequency will increase right so load is low so the frequency may increase do you know this phenomena happening why it's a bit going out of the track if you want i can explain it to you yes sir what yes so explain load load is down and frequency is more what happens say you have a cycle so this is actually running a cycle don't know how to draw this cycle right so he is on a bicycle and uh, he is going like this right so there is only one person sitting on top of the oh. bicycle right 
sir got it got it load and frequency is in worship yes. yes sir so you are running the cycle and suddenly what apg jumps into your cycle and he also starts to have the ride then what will happen will your speed of rotating the wheels increase or decrease decrease yes decrease so that means what if you have extra load it's then what your frequency will decrease it will double right so the standard frequency is 50 hertz only and you are allowed to go only plus minus 2.5 hertz so additional frequency is 52.5 hertz if you go out of 52.5 hertz you will be kicked out of the power supply system you will your system will be kicked out of the grid right automatically by the use of relays right so what will happen if at night the load falls very very sharply means beyond the preset limit then what will happen your frequency will increase if it crosses the 52.5 hertz barrier your system will get get kicked out so in order to maintain the frequency what you do you increase the load so how do you increase the load how do you increase the load would you, would you call everyone at night and tell okay okay the frequency is increasing so please start your fans and lights and tvs would you call like this or or whatsapp everyone huh is it possible no so what the power system engineers do they again pump this water back upwards do you see the trick you have to pump okay, the sir. water back to the reservoir right so while pumping this salient pole motor acts as a motor no right so it is acting as a pump and you again store water here again at the day time when the loads are very high you need energy right so you will again let this water flow so this type of power plants are actually called pump storage power plants right so in such a case this drive motor will be of a huge rating say in the range of megawatts right so salient pole motors are definitely used where the uh, where the load is very very high Hmm. Okay. Okay. So and then we have a so called stepper motor, SRM, servo motor, BLDC. So we will look out on this later, right? First of all, let us go to the crux of the thing. Then we will talk about it later. Right. So now we have a motor load diagram thing. so in order to make a drive what all do we need we need a power supply right like this this power supply will be there then a dc motor has to be there in between a controller might be there controller and the drive system but we will talk about the interface between the motor and the load so what can be the interface the interface can be a motor to a pulley it can be through a gear it can be through a v belt is it not so so this is a v v belt is it not looking like a v yes sir v right so it's called a v belt right so it can be in the interface can be through a gear right through a v belt through a rack pinion type of thing and finally we will have the mechanical load to so make a mechanical load an example is a fan example can be a fan a pump a hoist or any other thing so i'll go to the next Sir, slide yes but why do we need that interface or gear or pulley i mean yes, to decrease yes, the power yes that's a very good question i missed it out very nice so let me have the pointer yes so why do we need such a interface see the gear uh, say the motor is running at 3000 rpm right and your yes. mechanical load needs to run at 750 rpm to control the speed right so we can use a modulator or converter 
for controller modulator converter yes you can you can right so that's why uh, nowadays in the electric bikes you don't find a gear you will just find an accelerator right yes sir but earlier days where uh, the power modulator was unable to do such things and also this reason that uh, sometimes your drive needs to rotate your motor will only rotate right but sometimes you need to have a linear motion also right yes sir like a lift example yes, is sir. a lift the lift will go up and down mm. but the motor will ro ro rotate either clockwise or anti clockwise so there you need to have such a type of interface is it not so there yes, you need sir. to have a pulley type of thing right mm -hmm. so yes. that's why you need such an interface yes may, many a times you can delete this interface if your converter is capable of taking care of the things but sometimes if you do not use this interface your converter may have to go through a lot of current stress it it might have to have a lot of current that will increase the cost so that's why in such a case that gear is actually used to decrease the current through the converter right so these are the reasons it will depend upon the application first of all so let us go to the next slide just give me a second i have to open a new slide so is it visible yes so what uh, can you see lecture 5 continued lecture ft motors yes sir yes sir yes sir lecture, lecture five continued continue. right yes remember that i think your refresh rate is very slow that's right no sir now it's showing lecture yeah. five yeah your actually connection is slow so let us have a look on the load characteristics what type of loads are available around us right so what load it's not an electrical load it's a mechanical load which is reflecting in the electrical system as an electrical load right so um, the motor load can be used to actually drive the load but the load torque will consist of some other type of some components right so let us see what are the components we have time time we have 10 yes, minutes sir. we have 10 minutes right okay so the motor load will consist of the load torque and some losses so what are the losses mechanical Excellent losses goodness. see Excellent if something goodness. is rotating that means there will be a loss right so what are the losses if something is rotating friction and windage if first of all any motion will have a frictional loss any motion whether it is up and down or whether it is rotatory it will have a friction loss now if it is rotating and there is a part which is going against the air it will have the windage loss mm. right so if you are driving a uh, bike what are the losses if you are driving so a bike first of all windage. the friction loss will be there and yes, what sir, loss yes. if you uh, have a big amount of a uh, poster held at uh, by someone Uh, sitting at the back side would you be able to drive fast no sir so it's a big type of poster for the tech fest and he is sitting with completely open and now you are trying to drive the bike what will happen to the back side person he will fly off right he will experience a force he will experience a huge windage force that's called a windage force so if something is rotating it will have two types of thing one is the frictional loss due to the ball bearings and all right Uh, for which you have to apply the lubrications from time to time and then you have the windage losses so the load torque will consist of actually uh, let me get hold of the pen yeah so the load torque will actually have some windage losses and some frictional losses right so this is the working torque so what is the working torque the real torque required by the real torque required to be taken care of right so if you are driving a bike so what is the load torque the weight of you right 
your weight has to be taken care of it has to be pulled at some speed right yes. so just a second i am getting an important call hello Hello. 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 Sir, कहाँ गए? भाई कब कौन आ रहे हैं? हाँ बोल बोलो बोलो भाई बोलो भाई. Hello. हाँ भाई. Yeah, please be quiet. I had an important call which I needed to attend from the exam session. so let's continue with the discussion uh okay so we have the working torque so that is the complete load torque that needs to be taken care of like if you are driving a bike i don't know why this window has again come up so the working torque has to be taken care of working torque and then the accelerating and deaccelerating torque so what is this this Sir, working torque means what uh, it means say it if you are driving a bike if you are okay. driving a car say okay right so what is the actual thing that needs to be pulled body weight and uh, your own body weight and your own weight. body weight and the car weight right so mm -hmm. that is the ultimate working torque that has to be overcome by the Engine yes, or by sir. the drive by the electric yes, cars uh, own own motor right so that torque has to be first of all done and what you will have a frictional loss you will have a frictional loss yes sir right and plus what when you are driving you will experience a what you will, um, the more speedier you drive the more drag you will be experiencing the air air friction yes sir. so that's called the windage and friction loss mm. okay in total and what if you are trying to accelerate also if you are trying to accelerate right then also you will experience some more amount of torque has to be there if you are running at a constant speed then it's okay but if you are trying to accelerate then what then what mm. then you have to experience a more amount of torque you have to apply more accelerator torque right so it will yes, consist sir. of an additional torque if you are accelerating or deaccelerating right so it will consist of three parts the working torque the acceleration or deaccelerating torque and the windage and frictional losses right and this tf will actually consist of some viscous friction some coulomb friction and some friction the parts sir, of coulomb and friction elaborate please yeah we will talk about it in the next class i don't want to continue because only 2 minutes are left so i will give 2 minutes for the uh, for any doubts so we'll continue from the next class so any doubts till what has been taught we have actually chart for that actually have a chart for that i have to take care of this window which is please move this window from shared application so um, in the next class we will be talking about uh, these three things that is the viscous friction the coulomb friction and the stiction right so viscous friction will be the air drag the coulomb will be the stickiness with which uh, the load is attached to the ground and stiction force is a constant so we'll talk about it in the next class so don't worry so any problems with the things has been that has been taught 
so some slides are slower to go some will be very fast so don't worry this is the pattern of the thing so I'm waiting for any doubts okay so i think there are no doubts today so we will start uh, tomorrow tomorrow do we have class and tomorrow we will be having class at 2 to 2:50 okay the same time okay so meet you tomorrow i think yeah. please come up with your doubts if there are any <laughs>